Hi there, this is a quick tutorial on the Inkscape interface. Now if you're uh, opening up Inkscape for the first time or you're fairly new, chances are good that your screen is going to look something like this. Uh, what this video is going to cover is how to break down each uh, area of the screen into its own little section, a named section, so that when we're talking about Inkscape in the future, we can use a common terminology to refer to each different section. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what each section does in this. I'm going to save those uh, breakdowns for later videos. So this is going to be just sort of a quick overview, the name of what each section is, and some of the features that you can find within it. Um, the next video in the series, I'm going to also show you how to make some customizations to how this uh, this layout looks. But for now, we're going to work with the default layout, and let's just get started right here. So first one, menu. Right up at the top, we have the menu bar, which is pretty common um, to, to pretty much any uh, computer program. So you've got your file, edit, view, layer, etc. along the top in this menu. Now, uh, the one important takeaway from this is in future videos, if I say like go to the path menu and use the union command, well, we're going to the path menu. We're going to scroll down the list uh, of the drop down, and we're going to go to union. So just know that when I say the, f the text menu, we're talking about this. When I say the object menu, we're talking about the object and the drop down and the, uh, the features that are included within that. So that's the menu. Uh, below that is the command. Now these are some, I would call them sort of the basic or the core commands. Uh, you've got like your new file, your open save document. You've also got things like undo and redo, uh, copy, paste, cut. Uh, some of these magnifying glass ones are pretty handy. You can zoom different ways. For the most part, I use uh, keyboard shortcuts to do all of these commands. So I actually pretty much hide this com this uh, commands toolbar from my interface just to free up a little screen real estate and I'll show you down the road how to do that. And below that we have the tool controls. Now this is a pretty important section to understand. This section, all of these little icons that you see along here horizontally, they change depending on which tool you have selected. So right now I'm in the select and transform objects tool which means that pertaining to this select and transform objects tool these are some of the options that I have. Now if I go down to say the ellipse tool, I click on that, notice that my options for that tool have changed. Uh, similarly, if I go to the uh, polygons tool, I have new options again. So note that the tool controls is specific to the tool that you are currently using. Now right below that we've got uh, our horizontal ruler and off to the left of that sort of join, we've got our vertical ruler. Uh, these are good to give you sort of idea of where you are in working where your object is in the Inkscape um, document or the Inkscape canvas. Now, Inkscape is a coordinate based system. So if you draw a shape, you'll be drawing something. Let's just go to a square and I draw a square over here. Um, just make it look a little bit more like a square, not to confuse you. So if I draw that square, and I go to my select tool, it's going to give me a little bit of information. It tells me that I'm negative 895 millimeters in my horizontal direction. So just suffice to know for now that if I move this to the right, I gain um, values in, in the horizontal axis. So that's how this works. Uh, the rulers, from the rulers, you can click on a ruler and drag down and bring up guides. So that's a really handy aspect of what the rulers are good for. Uh, you can bring in a diagonal one as well. And we'll talk about guides in a, in a later video as well. Uh, moving right along, the toolbox. We briefly touched on this when I was talking about the tool controls, but this is where you select your active working tool in Inkscape. As we go down the list, you know, we've got the select, we've got our node edit tool, uh, a magnifying glass zooming in, zooming out, measuring tool, a whole bunch of tools, so on and so forth down this list. And we'll have a video talking about what each one does in greater detail later. So uh, check back for that. Uh, the snap controls, way over here on your right hand side. This um, turns on snapping, and snapping is a feature where if you have an item, say you're, say I have two squares, and I'm trying to move one square, and I move it up close to this one, you see how it just sort of jumps as it gets closer to it, so it's snapping this corner to that corner, and you can control what, uh, what aspects or what features of shapes um, and objects snap to one another with the snapping control toolbar. You've got it's like a master on and off, and then you've got sort of subsections for snapping controls. 
And so that's all you need to know about that for right now. These are your snapping controls. To the left and sort of closer to the bottom of the screen are our scroll bars. Pretty obvious, obvious what those do. You can use those to scroll around your canvas area. Uh, I use uh, the mouse and keyboard shortcuts for this, so I'm going to show you in a later video how to turn those off and free up a bit more screen real estate. Um, the, screen, uh, the canvas is basically all of the white area that you, that you have in your Wings, Inkscape document. So I can move around. I'm just using my middle mouse button or the scroll wheel and pressing it down to click and just dragging around. And this allows me to scroll around my canvas. So that's all of the white area in Inkscape. I can zoom out and you're gonna see a whole lot of canvas. So you can see that it's it's huge. I don't know if it's infinitely large, but it's pretty darn big. I've never uh, pushed the limits of what Inkscape can hold in the canvas area. Um, and, an area that's a bit more focused in the canvas, which you're gonna concern yourself with when you're creating documents and, and such and exporting things is your page area, which is this area with this black outline here where I've got all my text in. Now, this, this area, you can draw anywhere you want in the canvas. There are specific things that you're going to want to use the page area for. One quick uh, instance or one quick um, thing that I know of that's pretty important with the, uh, the, sorry, the page area is when you save something as a PDF, it generally only saves what's inside the page area. So if I saved a PDF of this document, I'd have this list of text here, but I wouldn't have um, the squares and this graphic over here. So that's just a quick takeaway on what the page area could be really important for. Mostly when I draw, I draw outside of the page area because I don't need these lines interfering with my design. And when I'm done and I need to use the page area features, I'll drag it into the page area. So moving along down at the bottom of the screen, or close to the bottom of the screen, we've got our color palette, which is just all of these colors sort of gradiented out. Some, some really common colors first, you know, black and shades of gray. And you use these colors you, you can use these colors to quickly change the color and the stroke of a selected object. So I'm going to select this square with my select tool and I can come down here and let's just make it a, a shade of gray. Click on a color. Now I've got a gray square. Click on a blue square or a blue swatch. I've got a blue square rectangle up there. Uh, that's basically what this does. You can, it's sort of a shortcut. You can bring up um, the fill color and the stroke color dialog box another way. We'll talk about that later. Uh, for now, I mean, I use this a lot. I just, I'm just oftentimes just changing to contrast in colors. So when I move one object over top of another object, um, I, I can see it really quickly. I don't know why my escape is being a little glitchy. It doesn't like my screen recording software, but so there you go. So, uh, you know, rec a red rectangle over a blue rectangle, just like highly contrasted so I can quickly see what's going on. Uh, so I'm, I'm oftentimes not looking for very precise colors which the, two, um, the color palette will give me uh, control over, but we're going to talk about that later. Um, below that, we've got the status bar. Now, this is really, really handy when you're trying to perform op operations. It gives you information about what you have selected. So I'm going to select this little red square, and it's going to tell me that it's a rectangle object, and it's in a layer called Layer 1. And this is going to become really important when you're trying to, to uh, perform sort of combining and cutting operations down the road. Sometimes they won't work as you think they should, and you can look down here for information on why. It also gives you information about the color, uh, the stroke of that object, the opacity, so how transparent it is. It allows you to toggle the visibility of a layer on and off. It allows you to lock a layer. Um, it shows you what layer it's on and would allow you to change uh, the current layer that that, that that object is on. And it also gives you this little click selection to toggle scale rotation handles dialog, which simply tells me if I click this again, it converts the handles into rotational handles. So that was a really quick rundown on the status uh, bar. I also call it the information bar sometimes. I think that's just sort of a, you know a, a, another good common sense name. Uh, technically, I believe it's status, but... If, I, if you hear me talking about something and I'm saying the information bar, well, I'm actually talking about this, officially the status bar down here. So that's pretty much it for the interface. That hopefully is enough to get you uh, up and running with uh, knowing when somebody is referring to something, and at least in the official jargon, when they're talking about the sort of, say, the snap controls or the snapping controls, you know to look over here to the snapping controls.
um, you know what the toolbox is. It's pretty important to talk about things uh, with the same terminology and I'll be on the same page. So hopefully you found this video helpful and thanks for watching.